See, you can find a million people who'll join you and say, yeah, yeah, you're just, but you know what they're saying? Yeah, yeah, you're just like me. Yeah, I understand you because we're same, same, right? You're like, yeah, I'm same, same, but I know Jesus. And therefore, I can't stay in my place of justification. I have to do what he said. So I choose to forgive. That's when people see you that you're a Christian. It is not weakness. Humility and meekness is not weakness. Why? Because humility and meekness is a choice. Some of us think we are being humble, we are not. We are defeated. In a place of defeat, you have no choice. You just have to take it because you are defeated. But humility is a choice. Meekness is a choice. Meekness says, I can get back at them. Yeah, but I won't. Because the Lord said not to take revenge. I won't, I won't take back. That's meekness, by the way. You have the power to do something and you choose to do what is right according to God. When you have the power to destroy them. Humility is not because I have no choice. You have a choice to serve. That is why it is not weakness. Weakness is when you have no choice. I have no idea what to do, man. No choice. You're weak. But to be meek and to be humble, you have to be strong. You have to know your identity. As Jesus said, it begins. Jesus, knowing that he came from the Father and is going to the Father, therefore, he took a towel. Are you catching what I'm saying? Jesus knew. He said, I am, I am from the Father. I am going to the Father. I know who I am so I can wash feet even though I'm a king of kings. When you and I know that we are a royal priesthood, come on, we are the sons of the Most High God. Humility is not a struggle. It shouldn't be a struggle. Your flesh, you say, don't, don't, it hurts. Ow, ow, don't. But you say, no, but I'm going to obey him. I'm going to obey him because I know who I am in him. I can't lose by obeying God. It may feel like it for a while. He's a reward of obedience. See, until we catch that identity, you and I will never wash the feet of Judas like Jesus did. How many of you will stay away from some others because they hurt you or did something wrong? See, it has to change. And that's what he wants us. We have to be willing to wash the feet of Judas. It says, And after supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Right? So Jesus knew when he was washing the feet of Judas, he knew what he was going to do. He knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. See, are we like Judas? What was Judas at the table for? What was Judas doing with them? What was his purpose of following Jesus? He had an ulterior motive. My motive is, if I follow Jesus, I can, oh man, he's going to be successful. This guy is doing stuff that no other human being has ever done from what I've seen. He healed the sick. I'm with him. Something awesome is going to happen. This, I think this is going to be a good venture for money. So he was there for an ulterior purpose. Why are you following Jesus? Is there a bit of Judas in you right now? Are you following Jesus? Because what he can get you and make you successful and this and that and the other. I think there's a little bit of Judas in all of us. But we need to get him sorted out that he doesn't kill himself and cause us to kill ourselves. But instead we need to repent. Jesus washed his feet because I believe Jesus still loved the man. It was almost go do what you have to do. Jesus didn't want him to hang himself. He washed his feet in love. I believe you have to do what you have to do. You will fulfill scripture. I will be betrayed. I know, but I don't want the betrayer to die. And, you know, I, 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 even after betrayal, repent and come like Peter. You know, this is what he's saying. We must be willing to do that. We must be willing to do that. Why? Because there's a blessing in doing. Listen, we end that. Most assuredly, verse 16 to 17. I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. Nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know them, blessed are you if you do them. Blessed are you if you do them. See, knowing is not enough. See, that's the problem with intellect. Intellect is important. We all need intellect. Don't foolishly believe and follow and listen even to a sermon like this without intellect. Go home and check if what I'm saying is correct or not. Use your intellect. But don't let it supersede the Spirit of God. Don't let it supersede. Don't, like I said last, uh, last week, don't analyze to paralyze. Don't analyze so much that it ends up with paralysis. Nothing happens because you analyze and analyze. But allow the Spirit of God to say, this is me, son. This is me, daughter. Go for it. Do it. This person, yeah, I know you don't like them. Just do it. I'm telling you. Again, like I said, the kingdom is different. The reward system is different. But see, I want you to understand there is a reward. His system is different. When you obey him, he will reward you. The reward comes in obedience. It's so important. And that's what he says in the end. Now you know, you heard, blessed are you if you do them.